Hi students, today we start lecture 28 and today I'm going to talk about supersonic flow which is basically flow which takes place at a Mach number greater than 1. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So let us first start with subsonic flow. So subsonic flow as you recall is when the velocity v is less than the speed of sound a. Now to look at this concept pictorially consider a sound source moving with velocity v. So here I have put this trumpet here and let's say this is a sound source and this is moving with velocity v. So after time t this is going to end up at point q. So this blue line tells you how much this particular sound source has moved. So this distance pq is the amount the sound source has moved from time t equal to 0 to time t equals to t. Now in the same time the sound has moved the distance at. So the sound wave has moved the distance at and the circle essentially formed by at is the boundary which is kept by the sound wave. So if you are within this particular circle you can hear this trumpet from this point. So this is the maximum distance the sound wave can travel in time t. Now what you can see clearly here is that if you are traveling at a velocity lower than the speed of sound then you are going to be inside this circle so the sound source stays inside the circle created by the sound wave. Now this picture changes dramatically if we start moving at a speed which is greater than the speed of sound so in that case v the sound wave velocity is greater than a the speed of sound. So in this case, I have shown here again this kind of trumpet showing the sound source. It's moving with velocity v, but now since v is greater than a, it has gone outside this circle and it has reached this point q here, whereas the sound wave itself is stuck at distance at, which is given by the circumference of the circle. So now what has happened is that the sound source has actually gone outside of the circle created by the sound wave. Now one of the problems this creates physically is that if you have air which is ahead of the sound source then this air is not aware that the sound source is coming. So essentially what has happened is the sound source has moved faster than the speed of sound and so there is nothing to tell the air ahead of the sound source that the sound is source is coming. So it is in a state of shock. And that's what creates a kind of shock wave in the system. So let's first start with a type of shock wave, which is a Mach wave. This is a very weak type of shock wave. So let's consider this Mach wave first. So a Mach wave is formed by a line from Q. So you can see here, if I take this point Q here and I draw a tangent line, which is in purple, that's a, at, a rect, at a right angle to the radius here then this is going to create the Mach wave. So a Mach wave is formed by the line from Q and you can clearly see now that the Mach angle which is going to be given by mu is something which we can easily obtain from trigonometry. So sine of mu would be at divided by vt. So that's the length opposite to the angle divided by the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So essentially this immediately gives us sine mu is at by vt is a by v is 1 by m where m is the Mach number and so I can immediately write mu as inverse sine of 1 by m. So essentially if you know the Mach number of the flow, you know velocity and speed of sound then you can calculate the Mach number. You can immediately obtain the Mach angle which is formed by the Mach wave which is given by the line from Q. So this is the tangent to the circle formed by the sound wave. So what happens is that if we actually take a typical thin body and we put it in a flow which is taking place at a speed faster than the speed of sound that is supersonic flow then we are going to get this kind of Mach wave formation and these angles are going to be given by mu. So essentially whenever we are going at higher than super higher than sonic speed 
what happens is that we choose bodies such as this so that they have sharp points here and therefore what happens is the Mach wave is a relatively weak disturbance. However, if I were to choose a thicker wedge here, then what happens is that an oblique shock wave is going to form and the angle beta is going to be greater than mu. So, whenever you are creating a thick wedge, you will get an oblique shock wave which is stronger than the Mach wave shown previously in that slide which we mentioned before. So now let's look at some of the things which happen in front of the shock and after the shock. So like I mentioned before, if we keep this wedge in supersonic flow, we are going to get these shock waves here. And so in front of the shock, you are going to have the pressure P, temperature T, density rho, Mach number M and velocity V. And after the shock, what's going to happen? The pressure is going to go up that I have indicated by P plus. Similarly, temperature is going to go up, density is going to go up, but Mach number is going to go down and velocity is also going to go down. So these are some things which happen because of the presence of the shock. The shock is like a discontinuity in the system. So this shock and the resultant changes in pressure are also going to lead us to something known as the wave drag. So again, let us consider this wedge. We put it in the supersonic flow. So here M is greater than one and also the free stream pressure is P infinity. So then what happens, you clearly know now there is the shock and so the pressure is going to change on the top surface. The pressure is going to be greater than P infinity and on the bottom surface also it is going to be greater than P infinity and you are going to get this drag because of this pressure component in the backward direction. So this is the source of the wave drag. It essentially happens because of the pressure differential which happens because of the presence of these shock waves. So again the wave drag is a new component of drag in terms that it is happening primarily due to the high Mach number at which we are flying this particular wedge. Now what happens is that in supersonic flow you typically use airfoils which look very different from what we have started before. So now what you do is you use supersonic airfoil which have sharp leading edge and what this helps you to do it helps you to minimize the strength of the shock wave. So I have given an example of such an airfoil here so it's like a curved airfoil but the edges are sharp and also an airfoil here. So this is a wedge shaped airfoil, but the, the edges are sharp here also. So this kind of sharp edge will minimize the strength of the shock wave. So we saw that we want a very thin body with a sharp edge that's going to create a weaker shock. So now if we were to now look at a flat plate and the reason we look at a flat plate is that in supersonic flow, the type of very thin airfoils with sharp edges which we use are very much similar to a flat plate. So in such a case, what would happen? I take the flat plate, I put it at an angle alpha, and what is going to happen is two shock waves are going to form at the leading edge and at the trailing edge. And there are also these expansion waves which are going to form out here and here. So these expansion waves I have shown in green and the shock waves I have shown in blue. So what happens is that the pressure decreases through the expansion wave, but the pressure increases through the shock wave. So essentially that's going to happen to the flow here. Now the net result of this whole system is that because of the expansion wave here, pressure is going to decrease also. So P is going to be less than P infinity. Recall P infinity is the pressure in the free stream. And below the surface or at the lower surface of the trail of this uh, flat plate, the pressure is actually going to be greater than P infinity. So this pressure differential is going to be there. And from this, you can see lower pressure is more, upper pressure is less. So there is going to be a lift generated here. And there will also be a component of drag like we discussed before. So essentially, the wave drag component is going to get created through this particular high speed Mach number greater than one situation. So we can actually derive certain equations which I will give here without any proof. These are typically found in aerodynamics books which deal with high speed flow. 
So according to that, if we were to put a flat plate at a flow greater than Mach number is greater than one, and the angle of attack is alpha, then CL would be four alpha by m square minus one half, and CDW would be four alpha square by m square minus one half. So these are interesting results. These also tell you that if Mach number was going up, actually this CDW component would actually be going down and so on. And of course, we know from our definition of lift and drag that the lift is going to be always normal to the flow velocity. So flow velocity is like this, lift is like this, and the drag is parallel to the flow velocity here. Again, like I mentioned in the previous slide, the top surface pressure is less than P infinity. The bottom surface pressure is greater than P infinity, and this is caused by the expansion wave in front and the shock wave below. So that's what's going to happen. Now, one of the things which takes place is that you get a particularly high drag component, which we have seen even before, and then the drag starts going down. So here I'm talking about the drag coefficient. So I've drawn this diagram with some typical planes illustrated here. So this is the CD versus M diagram. CD being the drag coefficient, M being the Mach number. Now, you know that when you cross the drag divergence Mach number, the CD starts going up and then it reaches a maximum at Mach number one, which is the sound barrier. And you can essentially cross the sound barrier by using sufficiently powerful engines, supersonic airfoils you should use in the high speed regime, and also you can do a sweep back. Now, the formula for CDW showed that this is proportional to m infinity square minus one to the power half. So essentially what happens on this side that is greater than one side of the Mach number regime is that the CDW actually starts to come down here. So this is the range in which mostly the fighter aircrafts and so on fly. There are few sub supersonic transports which have flown, for example, the Concorde and um, most of the aircraft actually fly either in the very low speed subsonic regime. So you see many of these simple type of aircraft which fly around. These are actually very similar to the aircraft that used to fly in World War II and so on. But in the regime which is transonic, you see most of the civilian and commercial jets flying around. So essentially they try to fly at Mach numbers below the drag divergence mark number or somewhere near this and they use various airfoils to improve their ability to fly in this region without getting too much drag increase. So the sound barrier of course was something which people thought was a problem because both on the left hand side and on the right hand side the drag coefficients contained this m infinity square minus one term or one minus m infinity square term on the left hand side. And so there was a fear that there was a singularity here. And so the CD would effectively become infinite. But what happens in many math theories is that this was actually not true because right at the regime, which is M equal to one, both these theories of supersonic and transonic flow are not valid. And therefore the drag here is finite. It is not infinite. And so once you had sufficiently powerful jet engines and you know more about structural design and about the airfoil design, and sweep back, you could essentially fly these aircraft. Now, sometimes people get slightly confused that if CD is coming down, why would drag go up? Now, the thing is that you should keep in mind that CD is coming from this value of alpha m infinity, but actually drag has this v infinity square also. So when you finally calculate drag from CDW, the fact that you are flying at supersonic speed is going to have a very big impact on this V infinity squared term. So this term is going to be very large in supersonic flight regime. So as you are flying faster and faster, this may come down to some extent, but this term keeps going up. So keep in mind that when you actually calculate the drag, there is going to be an interplay between the M infinity squared term and the V infinity squared term, and that's going to lead you to the actual drag, which is seen by the particular aircraft. So finally, I will <coughs> point out to you the concept of the Mach cone. Now, if you see most aircraft, typically fighters and so on, you will see that there is a 
very pointy nose here. So it's like a needle which will stick out from front. And so one of the reasons this is created is that you put this needle-like body here. Then what happens is that there is a mark cone which is generated like this here. And so you essentially keep the wing behind. So the wing is swept inside the mark cone and the mark number at the airfoil will be reduced. So if this is a typical supersonic airfoil which we are considering here, though the mark number in the free stream is greater than one, this will be at least less than the M infinity value here. So what will happen is that because of the presence of this sharp nose, you are going to get this mark cone, you are going to get a reduction in the free stream mark number. So this airfoil is going to be in a better shape so that the strong of the oblique shocks which you may get will be postponed or you will not get those kind of shocks. You will get relatively weaker shocks. You will get the expansion waves and so on. So you will get less wave drag type of situation here. So again, this is the reason why you see most of the aircraft will have that pointy needle in front. And the reason for that is they are trying to create this particular mark cone. So today's lecture, we discussed about supersonic flow. We saw that Mach waves form when the body flies at supersonic speed. And we also saw that thin bodies with sharp leading edges are suitable for supersonic airfoils. So the shapes are quite different from what we use in conventional airfoils for subsonic flow. We also saw that wave drag is high at sonic speeds. We saw that CDW, the drag coefficient due to wave drag, decreases at supersonic speeds, but the drag actually may increase because you need to also consider the fact that the velocity is very high and drag is proportional to V infinity square. We also saw that a sharp nose on supersonic aircraft typically are put so that you can create a Mach cone and this reduces the air speed seen by the airfoil, which will lead to better performance in most fighter type of situations. So today was a very basic introduction to supersonic flight. You got some idea about concepts such as the Mach wave, about concepts such as the shock wave and so on. These are going to be very important in many applications, especially if you are dealing with aircraft which are flying at very high speed. And nowadays what is happening is that there is a resurgence coming in supersonic transports also. So there are some companies which are trying to make supersonic passenger jet. So if that does happen, then that will be a great bonanza for the supersonic flight systems and so on and the supersonic aircraft. Because if you are flying between two distant cities, for example, you are flying between New York and London, or you are flying between London and Bangalore, let us say, or you are flying between Singapore and Melbourne or any of these cities, having a supersonic aircraft will be very useful. But one of the problems with supersonic aircraft has always been that they come out to be too expensive. They use a lot of fuel. And the other thing is that it's very hard to get a large amount of sales for such aircraft. So because of that, the economies of scale are difficult to exploit. And so the price of the aircraft remains high. But maybe in future, if there is enough demand on some of these routes, then the price of these tickets may actually fall and people may be able to take some of these aircraft, at least the business people who value their time enormously. So I'll end this video here. I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.